Okay, this is testing. This sermon's entitled Living Waters. Okay, Zacchaeus is going to help me out with this sermon. He's going to bring me some water here. Bring me that water, please. All right, thank you. Let me open with prayer then with a few verses. All right, God, thank you for allowing me to preach this. Let's pray that you'll keep this player running and keep give me some uh, more verses. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Bell bowed down, Nebo stoopeth. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy uh, loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together, they could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Here can unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are borne by, by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Okay, now, I'm, I just read for, uh, Isaiah chapter 46, the first three verses. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a swig of this water. The sermon's entitled, Living Waters, Living Water, rather. And that's what uh, the eternal life is. It's, it's, it's equivalent to living water. Okay, we all know that this, this physical water, this H2O, is enough to satisfy your immediate thirst. So let me go ahead and take a swig. Okay. All that can satisfy is your immediate thirst, but Jesus Christ wants to satisfy your eternal thirst, and that's why he offers eternal life, and he equates it to water. You look at verse 9, you're going to have to stop, you're going to have to stop making noise out here, okay? I got to, okay. All right. Then, okay, John chapter 4, verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, now, now first of all, the whole, the whole idea of, of him um, giving her water from a well represents the fact that he's, he did all the work. Okay? Believe it or not, the scripture is talking about if she had to go down and scoop her own water up, it would, it would denote works. But look at this. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that, that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Okay? See, she, 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 she misses the, the, pit, the boat here. She's thinking of real physical water like this. He's talking about eternal water. So she's questioning him because she doesn't understand it. You have nothing to draw water up with. Okay, and and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? She's saying, she doesn't get it. It's not physical water. It's eternal life. Then she's asking, where, where, how are you going to give me this living water if the well's so deep and you don't have any water scoop? But see, he doesn't. She doesn't understand that it's, it's not. It's a, it's, a, it's a metaphor. It's a word picture. It's it's a it's a way to kind of parabolically explain salvation. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Then answered, then, okay, excuse me, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now, I just drank, a, I just drank a, a little bit of this water here. What he's saying is that I'm going to thirst again physically. It's going to get hot again. It's going to get humid again. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, my, my body's going to dehydrate. You know, you start eating a lot of salty foods. You start dehydrating. I'm going to thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, that's, that's, that's salvation there in a nutshell. Let me go ahead and back up to Isaiah. Let's see where the old, in the Old Testament where it kind of describes this living water. Isaiah chapter, um, I'm going to have to dig around for it because I, I have the verse marked. <clears throat> Okay, it's, it's found a lot of it's found in a lot of different places in the Old Testament. If you turn to Isaiah chapter twelve, let's start with verse one. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation; I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song; He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Okay, that's this is, this is a prophecy of the uh, the actual um, comparing water to uh, eternal life. Now, if you if you turn to Isaiah, let's let's a few more books and uh, turn up. Let's see if we can find the other uh, reference in Isaiah. It's also found in Ezekiel. It's found in Jeremiah. I believe I have the one in Jeremiah, Mark. So let's go ahead and uh, at least find the other reference in Isaiah. Okay, turn to Isaiah chapter. Um, Isaiah chapter uh, 44, verse 3, it says, 
For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, okay, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, okay, a seed is a saved person, a person who got saved. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. Once again, that's another picture of, um, of living water found in the Old Testament. Now, the, li the living water is also an, um, a reference to the Holy Spirit. It's also, uh, it represents that the Holy Spirit is indwelt in a believer, and that's found in Isaiah chapter 49, start with verse 9 that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness. Okay, now look, at we, we, we think of a, a lost person who's in darkness. They shew yourselves, okay, they shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor, nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath, excuse me, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water, shall he guide them okay think about it it's it's the holy spirit that gives you guidance it's the holy spirit that leads you it's the holy spirit that interprets the scripture it's the holy spirit that um comforts us that's found all over the place in the bible so in this in this case it's the holy spirit that um that represents the uh the springs of water that that, that shall guide them so now <clears throat> okay another reference to water here is um in ezekiel chapter um 36 verse 25 it says then I will then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. Okay, this is from all your filthiness. Every sin you'll ever commit, henceforth, you're going to be clean. It's, that's a picture of salvation. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Now, it's very important to understand this, because tomorrow is the barbecue festival, and there are going to be these false teachers there, and I'm going to be totally ready for them this time. Last year I didn't have my little mini King James on me. I couldn't. I tried to refute everything they said with scripture quotation from my memory, and the guy said I needed to stick with the the New Testament because I was doing a lot of uh, Old Testament quotations and references. But I gave a few New Testament rep, New, New Testament references. Now th these people at the barbecue festival are going to tell you something totally contrary to everything I've been explaining here in this sermon. That by once one one part one uh drink or one um I guess the word you can use any type of word you want to use. One intake of uh, water, the, the living water, is enough to save you completely. You're, you're cleansed of all unrighteousness. You're washed, completely cleansed, past, present, and future sins. And um, that, that's what the Bible teaches. And we're secure. And the Bible even says that God keeps us saved. Now, let me go over a couple verses like that. These people were denying all this, saying that if you continued on in sin, then you weren't saved and all this mess. And it's all this repentance, turn from your sin, turn or burn garbage. And um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a stop to it. That's why I'm preaching right now. The Bible makes it very clear. If we're to preach, we have to know the word. We have to be we have to be in the word, studying the word to show thyself approved. Um, let me find one verse that proves that God keeps us, and then I'll close. But the whole point of sermon is living water. We believe on Jesus Christ, we get living water. It's not the same as physical water, which is going to cause us to thirst. Um, my point is, if you turn to Isaiah chapter 42, Isaiah chapter 42, behold, my servant, whom I whom I uphold. Mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. Because you, there's a, a lot of whole, all these verses talk about putting my spirit upon them, giving them the Holy Spirit, water. You know, it's all kind of analogous. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor discourage till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he hath spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Okay, so with the Holy Spirit. Now look at this verse. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. Now it's if God's righteousness, by the way, it's not our own. And will hold thine hand. Okay, this is an anthropomorphism. An anthropomorphism is a, is a, is it's when you, you're trying to explain a, a godly attribute based on a humanoid understanding. Like I will hold them with thine hand. Okay, a picturing a picture a person holding somebody's hand when they cross the road. It, 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 it denotes or it evokes protection, safety, security. Now look at this. And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. It says, God keeps us saved no matter what. And if we believe on Christ for eternal life, we've accepted the living water, and that is um, eternal life, everlasting life in heaven. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the for whosoever for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord <clears throat> shall be saved. 